Coming up, the suspected arsonists who've closed schools, destroyed offices and burnt down warehouses. The dangers faced by young people when they send a naked photo of themselves on smartphones. And why Harrison Ford is back in the cockpit in the Midlands. That's at six. Coming up, the suspected arsonists who've closed schools, destroyed offices and burnt down warehouses in a community. Now the latest ITV News Central with Bob Warman and Samina Ali Khan. Hello. On the programme tonight, a school closure, destroyed offices and burnt down warehouses. The suspected arsonists causing havoc in a community. What about us? Stoke-on-Trent's leaders say they should have an HS2 station instead of crew. What are your youngsters doing on their phones? The dangers of sending naked photos. The simplest message is, would you share this picture with your grandmother? And Harrison Ford is back in the cockpit, but this time in Shropshire. Good evening. Pictures have been released of two suspected arsonists who've caused a huge health scare and the closure of a school. It's feared the fire they're believed to have started may have spread the asbestos dust in the area. Well, more than a thousand pupils and staff have been kept away from the school, which was next to the scene of the fire. Tonight, though, council officials are insisting the area is safe enough for children to return by next week. Keith Wilkinson reports. Police believe these CCTV pictures show two men, possibly carrying petrol, whose actions have caused havoc across an entire community. They're suspected of deliberately starting a fire which destroyed warehouses and offices, a fire which it's feared caused the spread of asbestos dust in the area, a substance that can cause fatal illness if inhaled. The scare has led to the school next door being closed since the fire more than two weeks ago. It's 925 pupils having to go elsewhere and to do schoolwork online. The school has been um, contaminated by asbestos from the fire in the factory next door and the site is yet to be completely cleared of that debris and so therefore until that is done and we have the relevant clearances that the site is safe uh, then we can't reopen to, to students nor staff. At the moment we're organising coaches to seven different venues uh, we're also providing online lessons through a professional company so that children can have lessons in their own homes. It's not just staff at Yardley School at Tysley in Birmingham who are worried about the asbestos scare. Amanda Bailey says her pupil son Cordell is having tuition by laptop. She says she's glad children are being kept away, as some time ago her father-in-law died of asbestos-related illness. Now, how worried are you as a local resident? Worried because we only live on the, in the next road, so if the dust was flying everywhere, all on the cars it was. Yardley's is an academy trust, but Birmingham City Council has said in its view pupils should be able to go back by next Monday. It says air tests and expert advice has confirmed pupils and staff can return safely. A specialist cleaning company is on site. Meanwhile, police believe the culprits had made two previous attempts to destroy the warehouses. The males are possibly Asian. One of them is wearing a body warmer. We're unsure of colour of clothing um, and they appear to be in their, their mid-twenties, early thirties. Police are hoping someone will be able to name the arsonists who have caused so much trouble in this area. Keith Wilkinson, ITV News. The fight is on to bring HS2 to Stoke-on-Trent. Campaigners say if the high-speed rail line were to include the city on its way north from Birmingham to Manchester, it would provide a massive boost to the regional economy. They're furious that the current plan bypasses the area in favour of crew. 
Well, today, council bosses and business leaders travel to Westminster to put forward what they say is a compelling case. Our political correspondent, Alison McKenzie, reports. If and when HS2 from London to Birmingham is built, the next question on the horizon, how best to connect the high-speed rail line to Manchester? Simple, say the campaigners, forget the crew option on the table, go via Stoke. HS2 is not about engineering, it's about economics and it's about growth. And if HS2 is to deliver maximum economic growth, that means it has to connect cities. Stoke-on-Trent is the only city between Birmingham and Manchester. Today, civic and business leaders met with local MPs at Parliament, all aware that HS2 Limited favour crew because it's an existing railway town with good transport links time to change that view, they say. The chief executive of HS2, stage, uh, HS2 Limited has said that uh, HS2 is about connecting cities. They are putting a parkway station in crew, not even a proper station, uh, and we are uh, putting forward a proposal which is better, it's cheaper, it's, um, uh, it's greener, and, and it delivers uh, the greatest, buck, uh, greatest impact for the, for the bucks. Bringing the region within an hour of London, and half an hour of the major Local MPs have taken part in a promotional a video. Beneficial. We have fantastic things in Stoke-on-Trent. We've got wonderful brownfield sites, we've got a fantastic transport infrastructure and we've got a wonderful workforce capable of, of world-class products and, and productivity. What I can do as an MP and what I am doing as an MP is speaking with the government, speaking with the Department of Transport, uh, trying to open some doors. Those two little initials MP do manage to seem to, to get some of the doors opened from time to time getting the HS2 team from Stoke-on-Trent in front of ministers, in front of Sir David Higgins, uh, to really make the case. That's what I'm doing, that's what I'll continue to do until we're successful. The official word from the government is that there is no decision yet being made about where to site any hub station as a second part of HS2. The message plainly for the campaigners today is this, bring it to Stoke. Alison McKenzie, ITV News, Westminster. Some news in brief. The Education Secretary, Nikki Morgan, has been giving evidence today at the government's final session on Islamic extremism in schools. MPs are examining her department's role in investigating the so-called Trojan horse allegations in Birmingham. Yesterday, it emerged that there were still significant problems at the five schools placed into special measures. It will absolutely require, not just in Birmingham, but as I say, in Rotherham and other places as well, there to be a cultural change, which is that we should not be shy about talking about our own values, we should not turn a blind eye when concerns are raised, uh, and we should know that there are people uh, who don't subscribe to our values and who, as you say, will attempt some sort of entryism. There's been disruption to job centres and courts in the region as thousands of civil servants walked out in a dispute over pay. The Public and Commercial Services Union claim its staff will have suffered a 20% cut in their incomes by next year because of a pay freeze since 2010. Basically, I'm supporting this protest because of this 1% increase, which really isn't enough in, uh, you know, uh, nowadays economic situations. I mean, myself personally, uh, as, as everyone knows, you know, things are, get, things are getting expensive, food's getting, you know, the prices are high. Um, and it's not reflecting our, our work that we do as well. I mean, the amount of work that we have at work is phenomenal. Uh, the amount of changes that are happening at work right now uh, is ridiculous. The charity Alcohol Concern says almost a million people in the West Midlands are at risk because they drink too much. In 2012, almost 2,500 people died from alcohol-related conditions in our region, one of the highest rates in the country. There's been a small drop in the number of people unemployed in the West Midlands. 207,000 people were out of work across the region between June and August. That's 1,000 fewer than the previous three months. That means the unemployment rate now stands at 7.5%.